25 interviews, 33 hours footage, 42 hours editing, and God knows how many cups of coffee. This project, sponsored by the Northeast Organic Farming Association of Vermont, captures the unique stories of kids aged 10 to 28 who grew up on family farms. The film explores how that experience cultivated them as stewards of the land. We did the first interview on September's harvest moon. 1,400 miles later, we wrapped it up on the hunter's moon in October. We are grateful to the families who responded to our initial contact and said, sure, come on by. We showed up, said our hellos, and found a quiet place to set up the camera. No pre-talking, no advanced preparation. These interviews confirm that farm life fosters growth, builds confidence, and develops responsibility, giving kids a chance to learn and to succeed. Here's to the young farmers who are the future of Vermont agriculture. It's not like you can't just go back to your house and be a normal kid with a backyard. It's just you also have this other life of being like this worker and helper on your family and you have all of this place to basically run around. It's like having a park in your backyard, but a whole lot cooler. I don't know if it was a decision or if it's just something that kind of has, ha you know, just continuously has stayed with it. But it's definitely, I mean, I've left and come back and it's just very meaningful work and it's... Um, my name is Eliza Pickering. I'm 25. I grew up here in Arlington on my parents' family farm. And I'm feeling flat. Um, so we grow vegetables and annual flowers and perennials. Um, we have a landscaping business. I have a CSA and then we sell to uh, quite a few restaurants throughout Manchester. Um, I guess I decided to continue growing or become part of the family business. Uh, sometime in college, I left and um, college didn't really work out. I was at three different colleges in a year and a half. I do work for myself, but it's very, um, like on the family farm, it's very integrated with, with their business also. Um, I mean, we do help each other out a lot, but I think um, the boundaries of, of, I think you can overwork yourself a lot because they're, you're making up your own hours. Which the benefit of that is when you have things to do, you can go do them and nobody's telling you you can't. But then it's hard drawing a line of when to stop and finding, finding balance and time to have a life outside of your business. I think um, not being a people person in this business is, I don't think a lot of people in this business are people people. That's why we work with plants. <laughs> but yeah. I think there's a very spiritual part of farming or growing or just being connected with nature in that way where you're you're nourishing soil and then getting nourishment out of it. I would say just in the past two years it's solidly or three years it's solidly been where I have a lot more control of the decisions. Dad has a really big hand in the vegetables also in planning and and what, you know, he, I, but I think maybe the last year he's really given me a lot of <laughs> leeway um, in making decisions and being much more in control of it. And it takes a long time, I think, to get there. But I think once you start investing in the business yourself, um, people have a lot more, you know, they want to, they see that you are really involved and care a lot and they're, you're willing to put a lot of yourself into it and they they respect that. A large part of putting in the long hours and the days is 
I need time away and to travel and I'm, I'm still young so I don't want to feel like I've just been here my entire life. So um, it's important to me to get away in the winter for a good period of time. I think what keeps me going is, is just knowing that you're doing something every day that's, that's, I mean, you're affecting other people and it's important. You're not, yeah, it's in, I think it's important work. Um, so my name is Addie Nevitt. I'm 11 years old and I live at Full Moon Farm in Hinesburg, Vermont. Uh, at Full Moon Farm, we grow vegetables, and we have pigs and meat birds. Um, so to help around the farm to do my chores, um, mostly I help out feed the bunnies. Um, sometimes I'll work in the wash station helping washing vegetables. Sometimes I'll go out to the fields and work with the crew. Um, but really I have to get collect my eggs, put in my hens at night. Um, and basically just help out around the farm. Uh, so my mom runs the farm camp that we have here, um, and we have our own kids' garden, and we work in there. Um, they also help out with the hens when they're here. Um, I am a junior counselor there, and so I'll most likely be the counselor soon when I get a little older. And I also, um, what I really like about it is that um, I get to meet a lot of new kids who want to learn more about farms and have a good time on the farm, and that's just really fun. And I love being able to go and bike over to the pig barn. Like, it's not just like a walk, I can bike there. And I like not living on a giant, huge, busy road, and the country is also so beautiful. Um, well, I, what I'm really proud about is that I get to know where all my food comes from. Like, I get to know how my chicken comes to my dinner plate, like, all the process before the food comes to me eating it in my lunchbox and whatever. And also, like, if my friends are, like, talking about, oh, I ate chicken for dinner last night, I'm like, do you know what happened? Like, and I just get to tell them, like, I get to teach them more about stuff that they don't know yet that I do know. My name is Governor, I'm 12 years old. My name is Willa Rob, and I'm 10 years old. My name is Sam, I'm 15, and we live at Tangletown Farm here in Glover. I like living on the farm because I like all the animals and I like that I get to ride my horse. I like living on the farm here because there's so much space and I can kind of do so many things, I can do kind of whatever I want. We get to drive all the uh, equipment around, like the tractor and the truck, and help feed the pigs, and that's pretty cool. Those things we do with the tractor, we move chicken houses around, we, we use it to move all sorts of stuff, wood, firewood, we use it to shovel a lot of things, like, you know, cleaning out the barn. Some of the chores that I do here are I collect the eggs, sometimes I give milk to the pigs, I give bread to the chickens, I sometimes give grain to the chickens. Every Saturday we go to the Montpelier Farmer's Market and we have to get up at probably 6 o'clock and it's pretty early and we have to help out like setting up the stand and uh, selling stuff and it's kind of hard but it's also pretty fun. Uh, in the summer some of the chores I have to do is I help processing with rabbits and chickens. Uh, uh, we have to get up pretty early and we get all the chickens and collect them into a space and then we have to slaughter them and clean them. Um, that's pretty hard. We do a lot of carpentry around here. The projects that I've helped with are we have the big chicken houses we have out there, the big red ones, and the turkey club, which is it's the, where the turkeys live. Yeah. I drive this skid steer and I clean the barn aisle by scooping up poop. <laughs> it's pretty satisfying when, when we kind of finish any job, just when it looks good. I like when you can see what you've done.
Uh, I'm definitely proud to be a farm kid. Um, I love learning all the things I get to learn here, like carpentry and learning how to take care of animals and building things and fixing things like tractors and cars. I definitely love that. I really like hanging out with the pigs and I like it when we have new piglets because they're pretty cute and I kind of just make sure that like everything's okay and none of them are like dying or anything so kind of a piglet whisperer. My name is Mercy Larson. I am 21 years old. I'm herd manager at Larson Farm in Wells, Vermont. As herd manager, I'm responsible for daily milking of the animals and making decisions about health um, issues on the farm, as well as you know, how to prevent contracting diseases with the dairy cows. I do a lot of um, sanitation work as well on the dairy, um, especially with raw milk. We own a 21 cow, grain-free, 100% grass-fed dairy. So a very large part of my responsibilities is moving cows daily throughout the pasture. Um, I move them three to five times a day. It's very small paddocks, so they both eat and trample um, the residue into the ground and adding organic matter to our soils. So year after year, if we do a really good job, we're improving our soils and it's so beautiful to see that happening. I grew up on the farm, was homeschooled, which mostly consisted of exploring the, the wilderness surrounding our home, um, playing with all of the animals, learning a lot about life processes by being involved on decisions in the farm. And I would always just follow my parents around when they were doing chores. And whenever the vet came, it was this huge, wonderful, you know, kind of a stressful thing because if that was there, someone was sick, but um, just learning so much every single day about how to make decisions and feed animals and take care of them. Working with my dad is the most complicated and wonderful experience. Um, I've actually never worked for anyone else, which is, I hope to experience that someday. The teamwork aspect between my father and I of how we run the farm has increased the efficiency of how the farm operates by managing the little things that will increase milk production, say, or cow comfort, that in turn, in the big picture, will increase our, our profits um, and the health of the, of the farm as a whole, where, well, my dad kind of steers it through um, the big decisions. I find farming to be incredibly rewarding in that you see change every day. Every day is a new challenge, and at the end of the day, you've really accomplished something. You can see the changes. There's milk in the milk tank. The cows are all healthy. Um, the challenges are that there is never a day that is not awarding. You never um, really get a break, although working with family makes it so that we can cover for each other on a daily basis. Farm work is hard because it's sometimes physically difficult and dangerous. There are times when, you know, you can't, you can't not milk the cows tonight because you're not feeling well. Um, but that's exhilarating too, you know. Finding out how far you can push yourself to accomplish a goal is really amazing. I find I'm much more capable than I would think I am. Growing up around animals, I just learned how to you know, ask them to go where they needed to go. And it's kind of second nature to me, where often people come to the farm and I can't explain to them you know, how to not scare a cow. You know, how do you move this cow through a gate without scaring it or um, taking forever if it's being belligerent? <laughs> I love dairy farming. It's an incredibly engaging career and being able to see things change over time is fascinating. However, it's really, really hard to financially support a farm um, in the agricultural world of business. I'm not sure that I could farm the way I want to with individual cows, all their own names, and still be profitable. So I'm not entirely sure I'm going to stay on the farm. Um, 
when the financial future is so unsure. I definitely think that I'm a part of everything that happens here. Um, biologically, I'm, you know, I eat everything that comes off of the farm and I very rarely go shopping. Um, pretty much everything is local from this area and this farm. So I'm a part of the farm and the farm is a part of me. Um, My name is Baron Lovejoy. I'm 11 years old. I live in Coventry, Vermont on Apple Edge Farm. Some of the chores I do are milking the cows, feeding the pigs, moving the horses, really moving any animals and doing the chicken chores. And I like living here because it's really cool to live on a farm and it's really cool to uh, be out here and not like be in the city and it's just really cool to have this experience. I'm happy and proud to live here because there's just so much to be done every day and it makes me happy to live here because uh, like I get to be with animals every day with other people like from the city don't. I want to be a farmer when I grow up because I want to use what my parents taught me and I want to have gardens and animals. It's cool to be able to like make your own meat and be able to process it, but the thing I don't like about it is you have to end an animal's life. Some things that are hard is all oh, the animals can't stay. Some they have to go. And when you bond to them, it's really hard to have to let them go. You know, know it's really hard to have to get rid of the animals, the reward of the meat and everything is still better and awesome to have. Not only we process our own meat, we also make apple cider, and when it starts to come out, we always say, Nature's Nectar! I'm also homeschooled, so it's like when I get done with my school, it's basically I go hang out with the animals where I go do what I want to. Uh, I also really like and enjoy being a farm kid, and I'm really happy I am a farm kid because just it's awesome out here, and I love it out here. Hi, I'm Willow, I'm 13, and I live at Laughing Child Farm. I am Rowan, and I am 10 years old. I'm pretty proud of my parents. I mean, they own the um, Vermont's largest sweet potato farm, which is pretty impressive. With my parents' sweet potato business, I help plant and pack out the sweet potatoes. I usually help wash the sweet potatoes. I mow. I weed whack. I milk the goats. I also milk the goats. <laughs> I pick apples. I pick raspberries and help in the garden. I pick blueberries. <laughs> um, yeah. I've learned how to weld, and I often um, weld makeshift parts for the tractors. We also chop a lot of wood for the wood boiler. Um, I personally don't think I want to be, be a farmer just because it's a lot of work, and I think I want to do something, I don't know, more math or sci I like chemistry involved kind of um but I definitely want to have my a garden of my own yeah I can agree with her I don't really want to be a farmer because that's like a lot of responsibility but I think I want to like have a garden too but I, want to... I feel a little bit different than my peers and classmates because well I have a better understanding of science occasionally and like the environment and I'm stronger and I don't know I go outside more so like I have a better understanding of the space around me <laughs> yeah I feel like we have I have a lot of hands-on learning at my farm so it's like a lot easier in class <laughs> I really like growing up on a farm like as a lifestyle because it's taught me a lot of things um and I just feel that it was a really great experience, and yeah, I hope lots of children grow up like I did.
My name is Jenna Baird. I'm 27 years old and I live in North Chittenden, Vermont and run the retail maple syrup business at the Baird Farm. Uh, growing up on the farm, I didn't really have a lot to do with the farm itself and the chores in the barn, that kind of thing. Um, I did spend a lot of time outdoors uh, around my parents when they were working and uh, that was always fun. Um, I have a lot of good memories in the sugar house and being in the barn. Um, and I did spend every summer after sixth grade working at Woods Market Garden in Brandon um, and that had a big role in my life. I went to UVM and I studied social work there. Um, later on in my years at UVM I realized it wasn't really what I wanted to do. Uh, after I graduated my partner Jacob and I went out west and worked on organic farms through the program WOOF, uh, which is Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms. We really enjoyed that and we had the opportunity to come back to Vermont. And Jacob and I came back in 2015 and we worked for my dad doing the production end of the syrup operation here. Um, we did st stringing of lines and then during the season we helped him tap all the trees and, and boiling the syrup and, um, and we really enjoyed that. Uh, we eventually had the opportunity of taking over the retail business. My dad had wanted to totally get out of it. Um, so we came back at the right time. And I think to have a positive relationship with your parents is, if you're going to go into business with them is really, really important. Um, being open with them and if you're having any problems or things on your mind, just get it out there. Like They're your parents. They're going to talk to you about it and it'll be all fine. <laughs> this past summer, Jacob and I spent the whole summer redoing or actually expanding the sugar house. Um, we put a new retail space in and a new canning room. Um, originally, the retail space was in my parents' house and it, that got complicated. In the sugar bush, we've done um, some new things that probably my dad wouldn't have done. We installed CDL monitoring systems so we can check the vacuum uh, gauges from our cell phones. Um, we don't get as much exercise, but, <laughs> but well, we still get a lot of exercise. Um, but we, we can increase, um, we, can f we can find these leaks in our vacuum system really quickly. Um, so that's one of the new things that we've added uh, to the retail business. We've redone the entire website. Um, we have a huge presence on social media. Um, we send out newsletters, do YouTube videos, have a presence on Facebook and Instagram. Um, so there's a lot of new things that we've added. I think sometimes my dad was a little bit hesitant. I did a newsletter uh, once a month, and when I first started doing that, he, he said, you might not be needing to spend so much time on this, because I spent a lot of time designing a newsletter and you know getting photos, making videos and stuff for it. Um, but eventually, we ended up, people really love it, and he, now he's so excited about it, he gives out um, or he gives me emails from people to add to the list all the time. This person wants to be added. My dad has been, I think he's been really excited about everything that we've done. Uh, my mom as well, uh, she's really supportive. And we hope to be in it for the long haul. Um, there's a lot of things to work out. We're taking it um, in baby steps. Um, definitely right now we're really focusing on the maple, but there's a lot of other opportunities on the farm. It feels really great to be home. Um, Every day I, I enjoy the views so much and the landscape um, out in Oregon. That was something that I guess I, I didn't realize I missed that so much. Um, but we're really happy to be home and be back with our family. And uh, yeah, it's been, been great. My name is Harlan Ransom. I'm 12 years old. My name is Oliver Ransom. I am 10 years old. We live here on the Rock Bottom Farm. We are here in our dry cow barn. We have about 140 cows on our farm, and we only milk about 70 of them right now. Here on our farm, we make uh, all sorts of milks and ice creams. I can do basically everything besides drive a tractor, but mostly when I'm helping out milking, I either take off cows, which means you remove the milking machine from their udder. I sometimes feed them. And then also when we're haying in the summer, I can stack bales in the barn, load them into the wagon. But 
I'm Clifford Ransom. I'm 17. Uh, I'm a senior at Thetford Academy. So uh, we're an organic dairy farm and we grow most of our own feed. When my parents are off doing something, a lot of times I'll uh, milk the cows with my brothers. There's a lot of enjoyable parts about the farm. It's still nice. There's lots of outdoor space. Um, kind of go wherever and still like not a ton of people around. It's nice to be able to do that. And a lot of it is actually like imagination based because when you're presented with all of these different things like you go out into your backyard and you could play a game but here you can like run all around and you can like find interesting sticks mm -hmm. and rocks and just play games. Basically do whatever. When I was younger I always thought it was super fun to climb around on the round bales. Um, they were kind of big. Um, they seem a lot smaller now than they did then. And then we'd also build hay forts in the hayloft. Um, yeah. We made a lot more than just a regular hay fort. We once made one that was four stories and it had like a little terrace on the top to jump out. So being a farm kid is great. Uh, I think it's taught me to work a lot harder than some other people. Um, and then I also have like a lot of experiences. I know how to fix stuff and sort of like be outside and be a good uh, kind of like outdoorsy type person. There's a word for that that I can't remember. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that's a big part of it, like being outside and respecting nature and especially cows. Cows are a lot stronger than you and like recognizing that you're not always the top dog. It's... They say wisdom comes from experiences and you get a lot of experiences on a farm and around and like working than you could get most anywhere else and so I think, yeah. Also gives a lot of time as a family because I mean, when you're going up to the barn to milk, it's not like your parents go off to work and you're just waiting at home for them to come or you're in some like after school program you're actually there helping them. You've got a big opportunity to talk and lots of things to learn. On the farm, I've learned a lot of stuff. Um, I've learned how to milk cows, obviously. That's a big one. I can drive a tractor pretty well. Um, I've been driving cars and trucks around on the farm since I was probably like 12, <laughs> maybe younger than that, actually. Um, I've learned how to fix stuff that I've broken, mostly. Um, pretty good at getting tractors unstuck at this point. Um, and yeah, done a lot of stuff like that. I think we just do a good thing and like, we mow a lot of hay for people whose land would otherwise like, sit there unused and just sort of breed low quality grass and we help bring it back into like a productive use. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty proud that we run an organic farm and we don't we like make a really high quality product without the use of chemicals or other things which are sort of not exactly cheating but a little bit. Um, it's nice to know that like if everything went south like we could still basically do what we're doing. I'm Mayfla Zaguad and I'm 10 years old. I'm Kate Waymeyer and I'm also 10. And we live here at Cedar Mountain Farm at Cobb Hill Co-Housing here in Heartland, Vermont. To help around the farm, I come down here every week on Wednesdays and I do 4-H. And then on the weekends, I come down here and just do simple barn chores, like feeding the cows, giving them bedding, and changing their water. And I also help milk cows on the weekends. And on occasions, when the hoof trimmer comes here or the veterinarian comes here to give shots and do their hooves, I come down here and just help organize the cows for that. We both water our 4-H garden that we can take care of and we help tend other gardens and do work days. What I like about living here is um, we just get to walk anywhere, go anywhere, play anywhere. We can come down here whenever we want if we want to say hi to our animals or do anything like that. And, we're not just like have to be, be inside and confined in this little backyard or have to go to a park if we want to play outside. So another good reason why I like living here is because we have all this great garden space and we can like 
actually get some farm life into us and come and be with animals and we can do like chores and we actually get responsibilities, which I like. Um, living here makes us more comfortable around animals and it makes us want to work harder and do some other things that a lot of other kids wouldn't want to do. Also, we get to learn a lot from the people around us because they know a lot about things that we don't know and normally other kids wouldn't think of learning that. There's a lot of ways to entertain yourself here. The cows, the common house, the gardens, and there's some swings and stuff in the woods that we can do. I'd like to be a zoologist when I grow up because I really like working with animals. And I want to be a trauma physician and have a part-time farm at my home. I'm proud to be a farm kid because this is a great experience and I'm just proud because it's the way I'm growing up and it's a great way to grow up. I'm proud to be a farm kid. We get to be around all these animals and gardeners and lots of other people don't get these great experiences that we do. I am Eben Proft of Woodbury Game Birds out of Dorset, Vermont. I started 2012 um, rearing pheasants for the culinary market and shooting preserves. I rear just over 6,000 birds a year. Uh, my markets are 75% restaurants um, from New York City to some up in Maine sometimes, New Hampshire, and then Manchester in the mountains area. For the shooting preserve markets, it's primarily dog trainers. Travel the world, um, Australia, New Zealand, England, Idaho, Alaska, and came back to this place. Like this is still, this is still the place to be um, as far as I'm concerned. After, after college and working for those keepers out there um i kind of found myself asking myself like what why why am i doing this for my why am i doing this for other people i can do this myself that i don't have to do a hundred thousand right off the bat like if i do a thousand the first year and work elsewhere and slowly get into it every other boss started out with a couple hundred birds um and they slowly eased their way into it um the first year I just, I built a couple sheds and bought in some net and um, gave them way more attention than was probably necessary. Um, and five years into it, I have an incredible following from some chefs. This year, I haven't even started processing this year um, for my fifth year. And I'm already looking forward to my next year. I'm already looking forward to the sixth year. Um, it's, it's just really exciting. The, the biggest hurdle about working for yourself is you're working for yourself full time. Um, it's lonely. Um, 12, sometimes 16 hours a day. But then at the same time, when you're, <clears throat> when you're working in your pens or knocking snow off nets or feeding birds, feeding out, three tons of grain in a day by hand. Um, then at the end of it, end of the day, you sit back and that, the level of reward you get just by sitting back and no, looking, looking down at your pens um, or walking by with your spaniel um, and knowing like, yeah, everything is absolutely mint. Like there's nothing else I can do. In hindsight, I don't really remember doing that many chores, to be honest. Um, it's mostly running around trying to build forts out of rusty nails and scrap pieces of plywood. <clears throat> um, biking and uh, swinging the pond and kind of going on these little mini adventures. Uh, I doesn't pay that well, um, no matter what product you have. 
Um, I mean, I've got this quote unquote high end product, um, but I still need uh, forestry management, um, saw log sales and plowing in, um, in the winter to kind of keep me going. I've thought about a lot where I want to be in another five years. Um, it's like, oh, I could do, I could start hiring people. I could go up to 20,000 birds and be some huge uh, game bird supplier, culinary game bird supplier. Um, but I think that would take out the joy of it for me. Um, if I'm somehow able to figure out to make just make a good enough income off of 6,000 birds. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll be, I'll be over the moon. I'm Zenon Stevenson and I'm 10 years old and I live on uh, Old Yates Farm in Castleton, Vermont. Uh, we grow uh, sweet corn, uh, onions, and um, cabbages, carrots, spinach, peas, beans, um, cucumbers, uh, leeks. I help harvest on the farm, and I help with the uh, machinery. And uh, but, like I help bailing, I help uh, disking. Um, I started driving, like, well, when I was younger, I would drive the tractors, like, once in a while, but I actually started driving them a lot when I was nine. Well, when I started driving tractors, I pretty much ground all the gear parts, like, uh, shifting into gears on the tractors. So basically, I'm surprised that none of them, all of them still work. We have a Kubota M4050 and a Farmall 560 a John Deere 950, and a uh, Farmall Cub for cultivating. And me and, my, uh, young, and me and my siblings have a small little garden, Cub International Cub Cadet. I like being a farm kid because um, I get to know a lot about the animals, the machinery, and um, I get to spend a lot of time with uh, outside and I get to adventure in a lot of different parts of our land. Um, in March, we usually, um, and so far we've always done it for the past four years, sugaring. And I really like that because you're out in the woods and it's just fun. Like, uh, I can run the boiler and it's fun collecting sap because everybody goes out and does it and sometimes we have friends come over to help. Um, when we have uh, 325 taps and most of them are in buckets, so we have to spend usually about probably two hours collecting sap. Um, when I'm working with a sugar house, sometimes I have to take over the evaporator entirely when my dad has to go do chores, so that's about 40 minutes. I have to run the evaporator. And when we're evaporating for a long time, me and my dad take shifts, so one of us can take a break. I like the farm because um, you, there's always space and you are always like uh, learning something new and finding something out about it. I, when I grow up, I think I want to be a farmer because I really enjoy spending time outside with animals and um, working. Like I probably want a farm like I have right now, like I live on right now. Hi, I'm Brooke Dimmick. Um, I married my husband Bobby Dimmick. Um, we're both third generation farmers. I'm 23, he's 26. Um, we own this farm, it's called Hillcrest Farms. Um, we milk with robotic milkers. We have 60 cows that are organic, um, 120 cows total. We ship to Stonyfield Organic 
and then half of our milk stays right here and is made into neighborly farm cheese. So I grew up in Tunbridge, Vermont. Um, my family milked a herd of jerseys there. Um, my grandfather owned the farm. His grandfather before him owned the farm. Um, we milked probably between 20 and 30 cows organically. I was always really into the cows. I love I loved doing stuff with calves. I would feed the calves every day after school, before school. Um, as soon as I was old enough to reach reach the, the udders, I would I would milk in the parlor with my grandfather. I think I decided that I wanted to be a farmer probably around eight years old when I could do I could start 4-H when I was eight. Um, we got to go around to a bunch of different farms and we judged cows at those farms and one of the farms was VTC. And when we got there, I, I knew in that moment I was gonna be a farmer. This is where I was gonna go to school and learn how to be a farmer, so. And I did, I went to VTC, I went for two years. It was definitely when I started 4-H that I knew it was a lifelong, lifelong thing that we were gonna stick to. Bobby and I, decided that we wanted to be farmers together and and kind of keep the family farm tradition going so it took about a year and in 2016 we signed the papers and bought the cows from his parents. We were lucky in the fact that when we transitioned from his parents to us that they didn't they didn't argue or try to hold on to it they just kind of gave us the reins and let us go. I know a lot of farms are still struggling to passed down to the next generation. The dads or grandfathers are, are not out of it yet, and, but they need to be to keep the farm going and the next generation needs to take charge. My mom was always my biggest inspiration. I watched her milk the cows twice a day for 15 years, pretty much by herself. She held it together very well and always gave us everything we needed and wanted. And now that I have a daughter, I want to be that inspiration for her. I want her to say, that's my mom. My mom's a farmer. Like, I want her to know how hard working we are, but how, how happy we are doing it. Farming isn't, isn't a job or a career. It's, it's really a lifestyle that you choose and you live your entire life. You never get out of it, even if you stop milking cows. The challenges of being a dairy farmer are mostly like the loss that you that you feel like when you put a cow on a beef truck or you lose a calf to a bad calving or something like that. Um, some years aren't very good for forage and then winter is hard, you know. Your cows aren't getting the feed they, they, they need or want. I mean, a lot of the farms are family owned, small, 60 to 80 cows. And I think that's how it's always going to be because there is a generation of kids coming up. You, you'll see it at like county fairs. There's kids that lease cows from farms and are totally into the dairy thing and it, it's not going anywhere anytime soon, I don't think. So, hopefully, hopefully. My best advice for anyone growing up on a farm, anyone who's still farming, just keep going, stick with it. Agriculture is, is always gonna be here. Everyone's, everyone needs milk, needs beef, pork, whatever. There's always gonna be an agricultural industry. So if you're a little kid struggling, sick of mom and dad, like making you hay during the summer, having you do chores in the winter, just stick with it. There is a reward at the end and, and you'll be happy that you didn't quit. Um. One of the, some of the things we get to do here is just driving tractors. It's good. I like moving the chicken houses. Right, can we start over? I completely Absolutely. messed that up. I started back in 2011 or 12? 12, 12, I believe it was. And, well,
What I like about sugaring is friends come over to help collect, and it's fun because you get to um, drink uh, syrup right out of the evaporator. Going. What keeps me going? <laughs> um, there's no other out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you should ask this question in the spring, <laughs> really, not in the fall. <laughs> so I'm not really sure right now. <laughs> animals and and you just know a lot more than other people do. <laughs> <I'm> not joking. <laughs> 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 <laughs>